All right, everybody, Jake Raby here, Flat Six Innovations, coming to you with a Flat Six Minute from the Flat Six Flow Bench. So what I'm developing here today that you kind of see behind me here are a couple of special tubes, and these tubes are actually used on the genuine Porsche 997 X51, X51 only, 997.1 only, Airbox. Now that car had a carbon fiber airbox that we have since made our own version of and capitalized on the original design of that. Got about an extra 6% of volume out of it. And basically we did that with some internal changes around the Venturi tube and things that were just a little bit of low hanging fruit as we call it here in the industry. So doing that, we actually use the genuine X51 997 air intake boot that goes between what I call my RX3900 carbon air box and the 82 millimeter GT3 size throttle body that was factory on that 997.1 X51. So this is the original tube from Porsche. It has a factory part number on it, the whole nine yards. For the first few of these carbon air boxes that we built, maybe the first couple dozen that sold really quick, the demand for it has been way higher than I expected, especially at the price point this is. But, you know, of course, post-COVID, things built in America by hand, by true craftsmen, are worth their weight in gold. So, this tube is no longer available from Porsche. So now we've had to step in and also make the tube. On the first few of these, first couple dozen, we were able to buy these from Porsche, but we bought out everything they had, and they said they are not going to make any more, okay? So fast forward, and Flat 6 saves the day again. We save the day for you guys who want to buy an RX3900 airbox, and we also save the day for the guys that need this replacement tube for their original 997X51. This is not shared with any of the other cars, has an X51 particular part number on it. So now, through some modern technology and some development done here on the flow bench, we're able to save the guys that need one of these tubes, even though Porsche gave up on you. Okay, so here you have it. This is Porsche's version, and this is our version, okay? This is made with modern technology through additive manufacturing and a very particular super definition scan of the original part, okay? This was not cheap to do, but we had to do this to be able to continue on making the RX3900 airbox. There's many other pieces of that system that we've made with the same procedure. And this is awesome material. It's actually stronger than the original. So the idea here today is to figure out and make sure that the genuine article and our article have the same characteristics when it comes to volume and flow and swirl characteristics as well as port velocity. So I've been able to measure around the circumference here, get some different port velocity values. And also we're, we're using the swirl meter to gather some swirl, even though people are, I know who cares about swirl. I care about swirl because it's something that I use to help me to see if there's changes between components. All right, so now that we've got the flow bench set up here, I'm going to be gathering some data from both of these back to back. All I'm going to do is swap these out here on the flow bench adapter. I do have an 82 millimeter throttle body, the GT3 size throttle body connected to my 3D printed flow adapter here on top of the flow bench. We're flowing over 1,000 CFM. This Superflow SF1020 flow bench is badass. So now, I'm going to test this set of uh, flow tubes back to back, and we're going to see if we capitalized on what the factory did, or at least if we maintained what the factory did back to back. We're not really trying to beat them on this. We're just trying to make the same flow and have a product that you guys can buy because Porsche gave up on you. That's it. So let's see what we've got here. All right. Got the test set up. Got everything ready to rock and roll. Got the swirl meter zeroed out. Port velocity meters zeroed out, and here I've got the throttle plate wide open. Now, I've actually done my data uh, collection here at four points. Zero throttle, 25% throttle, 75% throttle, 100% throttle, okay? The red line matches up there at 100%. Now, um, 
since nobody cares about those lower values, we're just going to test it at max wide open. Okay, as you can see down in there, maybe the throttle plate is wide open. Um, so we're just going to leave it wide open here, and we're going to do the test and see how many CFM we've got. <laughs> Okay, so that was the additive manufacturing tube. This was basically our tube that we've created here 100% ourselves with Ellen Engineering. And you saw what it was flowing, basically 1,025 to 1,029 up to 1,032 CFM in that neighborhood. Uh, I was basically at the edge of the capability of the flow bench. It still had about 9% left. Um, obviously, if you have a flow bench any smaller than this, you would not be able to gather that data. Okay, so now I'm going to swap it over and put on the genuine article from Porsche. Came right out of a bag, genuine article, and we're going to see what that one does. Okay, so obviously I've got more data to collect. I'm just trying to show you guys the easiest thing. Everybody wants bigger is better. Let's see what the max volume is, and that's all we care about. So that's what I'm going to give you. But there's a whole lot more that I consider with this, and there's a lot more that you should consider with it as well, Although, at the end of the day, I'm just trying to make sure that we have the same amount of airflow through the two parts to make sure there's not something hidden that's a deficiency that we can't see visually, okay? This rules out the chances of anything being wrong with our replicated component. Or maybe we might even kick their asses. All right, here we go. We're going to take this one off. Already got the... Adapter off. I call the adapter my velocity stack here. That just helps level the playing field. So we've got the same amount of velocity going through each one. That one's seated. Okay. Now we're going to put this on and rotate it the same exact direction. Okay. I had that at 12 o'clock. We're at 12 o'clock. Make sure I don't have a lip hanging out in there. We're good to go. Okay. Ready for the next test. All right, guys, here we go. So, just to prove to you that everything is fair, this is the OE Porsche tube, okay? I did have to put a hose clamp on it. That's the only thing that I did because it's a little slippery inside and I could not get my, my velocity stack to stay exactly where it needed to be so I could get the clocking correct for my port velocity uh, test, okay? So that's the only difference between these two. Our tube's a little stiffer and I was able to do that. It's not slippery on the inside, okay? so. Nothing's in here. It's the same as the other one. It's actually the exact same part that we scanned. You see it has the little bump in there. They're both exactly the same, okay? Then I'm going to turn you in here and look. Nothing in the throttle body. Throttle plate's locked wide open just like it was before, okay? So here this is. It's on here, okay? And just to, to make sure that everything's nice and fair, Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start my test. Okay, so I just turned it around so you can see. There's your difference. Okay. And I'll be testing it at 25%, 50%, 75%, and then wide open throttle. And then I'm going to do my port velocity uh, study as well to make sure where the airflow is traveling around the inside of that tube's radius. Okay, so I'm going to show you that. It's what I'm working on. I'm going to show you a plot here when I'm all said and done. No bullshit. This is exactly what you see. It appears that we beat the Germans again by just making the part out of a little different material. Okay, this one is a little stiffer. So under heavy volume, under heavy vacuum, it's not collapsing as much. We did this on purpose. The other ones, they tear because they move too much. This one is more stiff. It keeps its shape. It doesn't collapse under heavy vacuum, okay? And this thing's flowing over 1,000 CFM. No bullshit. Here it is. All right, guys. So here are our gross CFM values, okay? Got them up on the screen. Wide open throttle test. He wants to see gross volume. I'm going to show it to you. All right, here we go. Here's our gross volume between the two hoses. No other changes. Same stack, same everything. 
and uh, very close performance between the two, but we do have one, at least in these preliminary results, who is shining a little bit better, okay? So uh, basically here at a quarter throttle, um, one quarter throttle, 250, we're flowing 138 CFM. The sun is not working to my advantage here. Um, we're gonna go on up to half throttle, and we're at 410 on the OE hose and 424 on our RX39 hose. We're gonna go to 750, 769 on the OE to 775, and here at full throttle, 100% throttle, as you can see there, we're 1,008 CFM on the X51 and 1,020 on the RX 3900 hose, okay? You can see they're really close to each other. Let me kind of zoom in on the meat of this subject here. Zoom in on that. So when we zoom in on it, you can see that we're actually beating it a little bit, okay? Not very much at all. So you might be wondering, why did we have a differential between the two parts if one was a scan of the other one, okay? We've seen this before, and it's one thing we've been able to use modern technology to capitalize on. Little things matter, just like we made this just a little bit stiffer than the original, because the originals we notice in the dyno, when we're doing dyno testing with these air boxes, we notice that they collapse some under heavy vacuum, okay? Even wide open throttle, we're seeing a little bit of a collapse. Now, basically with our air box, it is a little less restrictive than the factory one, but we can change what this tube's characteristics are during a test by just changing the air filters because the air filters change the resistance that this tube is seeing, okay? So under heavy testing, when you have more restrictive air filters, we notice that the tube wants to collapse. When it collapses, it changes shape slightly, and that changes the flow characteristic, okay? So we've been able to see that in today's testing. A little bit more firm is holding its shape better, is keeping those characteristics, and it's not deforming under heavy vacuum. In those cases, we're maintaining a heavier amount of volume through the tube because it's not changing shapes. We've noticed that if we develop the rest of our intake system using multi-jet fusion with some different types of nylon. As we made the parts more and more rigid, we ended up with better and better flow. We've seen that with some of the factory plastic parts as well, okay? Just wanted to show you guys this and help you understand that a little bit of rigidity is helping this scanned part do a better job than the piece it was scanned from. Now, you might look at these values and say, hey, when you were shooting the video and it was being tested, you know, I saw peak values that were higher than that. Okay, I've got this flow bench set up with the software, so it takes 10 samples over a period of time. And those 10 samples are then averaged out by the software at each data point, and that is how we get our data, okay? So that way it's not all bouncing around and we don't get little highs and lows. Basically what you're seeing is an average between those. That's why you saw our average was around 1,020, the other average was around 1,008 at wide open throttle, okay? Even though we had some of our numbers that were 1,032 during that test, okay? It takes out the peaks, takes out the valleys, it averages everything out. That's what makes this software great if you understand how it works, okay? So now I'm gonna go through and do the rest of my studies on this. Just wanted to show you guys what we're up to. Now we can fill those orders on those RX3900 air boxes that Porsche has basically rendered us unable to fill at LN Engineering. For Flat 6 Innovations and LN Engineering, I'm Jake Raby. Thanks for joining us.